Praise the Lord and good morning. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad to be with you this morning. Uh, we sent out a notification to our church members that uh, that this Sunday would be a rest day. And uh, because we've been going quite a bit, we've been busy, busy doing God's will and his work and we needed rest and i need to thank those of you that have contacted uh, uh, sister doretha and myself concerning our health and and i thank you for your prayers um in those areas i we're 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 mindful we're we're mindful of our health and and, and we're being careful um but this morning when i woke up this morning when i woke up the Holy Spirit spoke to me and it basically said, I've given you a reason to rejoice and you have to share that reason today. And so uh, this may be more of a testimony than a message. It, it may be more of a testimony than a message. And evening light, if you're home and you're up and you're having your coffee, God bless you. Thank you. And if you're resting, God bless you. And I just thank God for all of you that are watching wherever you are in the DMV, across the country, and of course, around the world. There, there are three verses of scripture that I, I, I need you to pull up or jot down. Proverbs uh, 23 and, and 17. Proverbs 23 and 17. Luke, the 10th chapter, and we're going to actually look at a couple portions in there, but the main focus in Luke is verses 17 to 20. So again, that's Proverbs 23, 17, Luke 10, 17 to 20, and then Revelations 12 to 15. And I want to speak to you really on the subject of reason to rejoice. Will you pray with me, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we, we thank you, Father, for this another day. It is indeed a day that you've made, and we will rejoice in it. Thank you for speaking to me this morning as only you can, and, and, and saying that there's someone today, someone that that I needed to share this testimony with, and, and I needed to share it with myself again, that, that I don't get caught up in what's going on in the world and world affairs, that I forget that we have a reason to rejoice. Now, bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's start in Luke, the, the 10th chapter, Luke, the 10th chapter, and, and beginning at verse 1, and it says, and after these things, and this is a familiar passage. Let me let me make that very clear. A familiar passage, and this this here particular subject has been preached through the ages. So some of you may feel that that you can preach it as well as I can, or or you've gotten everything out of it. So just bear with me because I need to share this testimony with you. I I, I really do. And, and ten and one says, and after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. So he's got his 12 and he appoints 70. And he sent them two and two before his face in every city and place, whether he himself would come. Therefore, he saith unto them, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into his harvest. Go your ways. I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way. Between verses 5 and 16, Jesus goes on to give a lesson in what I call the three behaviors, but it appears to be more of an etiquette lesson. That's, 
uh, Oxford Dictionary defines etiquette as a customary code or polite behavior in society or among members of a particular profession or group. And the first behavior or the first bit of etiquette, etiquette that he speaks to is how to approach and enter a house. And he says, when you approach a house, the first thing you want to say is peace be to the house. You don't want to be looking in the door, seeing what you can see, sniffing to see what you can smell, looking all over. The first thing we want to do is say, peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest on him. And if not, it shall turn again to you. And not only that, then he says, I'm going to teach you how you should be received in the city. He says, and in the whatsoever, this is in verse eight, whatsoever city ye into, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Now, 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 when you go to the city and they receive you, when you come to Upper Marlboro and Upper Marlboro receives you, Philadelphia, what, what, whatever city, you, you come to and they receive you, they go ahead, eat, eat such things are set before you. And not only that, not only that, he says, heal the sick that are there and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. And then in verses 10 through 17, he speaks to the judgment that comes on the house if they receive you not. And he says in verse 10, but unto whatsoever city ye enter and they receive you not, go your ways out into the street the same way and say, even the very dust of your city, which cleaves unto us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Even though you didn't receive us, even though you didn't receive us, oh, the kingdom was there, the kingdom was there. And then he begins to speak the woes. He says that it would have been better for Tyre and Sidon, and it would have, would have been better for Sodom if, if, if they had heard, if they had saw what you saw, it would have been better for them. He says, Capernaum, that you're exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despises you despiseth me. And he that despises me despises him that sent me. Verse 17, just, just stay with me here. Verse 17 to verse 20. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the Devils are subject unto us through thy name. And Jesus said, behold, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of of the enemy and nothing let's just pause there and nothing shall by any means hurt you verse 19 again verse verse 19 I, I, yes 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 this this is a testimony this is a testimony verse 19 again behold i give you power 
to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing. Anything you can think of that may come against you. Jesus said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Lord blessed us on last Sunday. It was it's been it's been quite a few months since since the uh, since um, the, the Lord elevated me to the bishopry in May. It's, it's we've been busy every every month. And and thank you for your prayers and those that have been going along with us. Thank you so much. Last, last Sunday we were with uh, Bishop Alfred Archer in Percival, Virginia, and uh, and I had to thank Bishop Archer because. His church was the first uh, uh, church that I was invited to as a minister to uh, to give a word from the Lord. And it was so funny. That's been 38, I guess, 35 years ago. And when I went, my whole message was on four three by five cards, the whole message. You know, no, I wasn't hooping, but but everything that the Lord had given me to say. It was done in about oh, five, maybe 10 minutes. And then I, I sat down. And, and, and I want to thank him because, because that's when I get to this Proverbs. That, that's when I get to Proverbs 23, 17, where it says, let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off. And so I, I took that verse, and I remember just like it was yesterday. I took that verse, Proverbs 23, 17, and I put it together here with, with, with verse, with, with verse, uh, 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 um, yeah, 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 with, with verse uh, one, with verse one and, and verse two in Luke. I put it to, together with, he sent them two by two to go into every place where the so ever he would come. And he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I got excited about that. And I got excited about, about this part here where, where, where he says, and I give you the power to tread over serpents. I, I, I began to rejoice in that the Lord after walking away from God for 18 years, that the Lord had called me into ministry to carry the glorious gospel. I, I'm trying to tell somebody I got some kind of excited with my 10 minute message. And so I had to thank him. And, and, and then I, I look at where we are now. With, with all the excitement, and I look at, at, at the times that have changed and, and, and the, 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 the introductions of, of expression of worship that we see now. We, we've gone through what, 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 what we call the prosperity gospel. Most of us remember it. You don't hear too much about it anymore, where every channel you turn to, every Christian channel, almost every Christian channel you turned to, there was somebody on there saying, money cometh. There was somebody on there telling us to name it and claim it. There was somebody on there said, go see that house and that vision that you have, that, that's going to come to pass. And, and, and we, many of us bought into that. We, we signed for cars that we knew we couldn't afford, but we said, God's going to make a way. We signed for houses that we knew we couldn't afford the mortgage payment on. And we say, but God's going to make a way. And, and then, and then that, that phase seemed to have ended. And then came the glossolalia phase when, when everything was about speaking in tongues. Everything speaking in tongues. Yeah. Uh, uh, we were, they were teaching us how to speak in tongues. 
few taught few taught on the gift of tongues few few taught on the on the on the gift of tongues on on speaking in tongues as the spirit gives utterance yeah and and very few were speaking on the gift of tongues but you could go into some churches and they would have you stand up and say repeat after me and they would speak in tongues. but that phase seems to have gone off as well and then you had the word phase the next was the word phase where everything you saw was the word no one there was no there was no uh no no shouting no no praising god no uplifting it was come on open your bible and, and open your bible uh yeah yeah there was and 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 now and now it seems that 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 phase is gone as well one one of the one of the channels that 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 used to be on uh, uh, used to call, included the word word in its name, <laughs> and and so when you would turn to it, you would be expecting to receive a word, but that channel is no longer on. And now it appears that we are in the prophetic. Everybody's got a prophetic word. Every well, not everybody, Pastor. Okay. But you can just about find a prophetic word anywhere you want. Of course, they're not true, but it's a word. It's a word. Many of them are true. Many of them are not specific. Many of them are not foretelling or forthtelling what God has already revealed to the person. Oh, uh, y'all. Because remember, prophecy, prophecy. Only the prophet only confirms what God has already spoken to. I have got a reason to rejoice. And then what happened is this 10 and 3 jumped out. He says, go your way. See, see we got caught up in, in, in that no serpent and nothing will be able to harm you and 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 we'll tread on the scorpions and yeah yeah but then somehow or another we miss verse 10 and 3 in Luke and he says go your ways behold i send you forth as lambs before wolves we missed that. We missed that. We were so busy shouting and so busy giving and, and so busy prophesying and so busy reading the word and, and, and in synergy all together. Oh, it's magnificent. When we put it all together, it's magnificent. But we had somehow or another missed this third verse. Go your ways, he told them. Behold, I send you as lambs before wolves. And so the writer picks it up and he says, he says, for I consider not my present sufferings, they're not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. He says, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm out here with the wolves. I'm out here with the wolves. And, 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 I, and, 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 and I, I don't know. I, I didn't quite hear Jesus. I, I, you, you know how sometimes you, 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 you hear all the good news, but there's a little bad news in there. But you're so hyped up over the good news. You're so hyped up. You forget that there's taxes involved. You, for, you forget that there's an annual fee because you're so excited that your, your credit card balance has gone up and you don't see where the interest rate went up as well. Jesus said, I'm sending you. I'm sending you as lambs before wolves. First Peter says it like this in five and 10. He says, but the God of all grace who has called you unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, that after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. After you've been out there with the wolves, 
after you've been out there and they smiled in your face and yes the backstabbers yes yes, yes. in the house of faith after after you've been out there after after you've committed yourself to this ministry or that ministry and found out that the foundation of it was not sure, after you have suffered a while, after you have given your money, given your time, given your offering, only to find out that someone took those funds and went off with, after, after, after. Oh, those are the wolves. Those are the wolves that Jesus speaks to in this third verse of Luke 10. He says, I'm sending you. Oh, God help me. How, how did we miss it? How did we miss? Did we want to rejoice so badly that we missed it? Did we really not miss where the devil tempted Jesus for 40 days? And for, Did we miss it? But Jesus comes back in Hebrews 13, I think 20 and 21. And he says, now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal, the uh, God, the eternal covenant, I, who, Father, the, the, through the eternal covenant, brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd, of the sheep equip you with everything good for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through christ jesus to whom be glory forever even though we're out here among the wolves I need to encourage somebody. I need to encourage somebody. You, you got the great shepherd. You got, yeah, no, no, no. Hey, God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even, even, though, even though you can hear them howling at night and hear them howling in the daytime. Yes, yes. And you think they're closer than they really are because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And my sound mind causes me to say, oh, but I've got the, I've got the great shepherd watching out for me. He won't let the wolf. He won't let the wolf destroy me. I've got to go through some things. I just want to give a testimony. I just, I just want to give a testimony. He says, rejoice not. No, don't rejoice over the fact that those spirits are subject to you. He says, but rather rejoice because your names are written I mentioned that on last Sunday, we were with Bishop Archer in Percival. Then on Friday, we were in New York uh, sharing the 106th birthday of my wife's Aunt Mildred. We went to Strasburg that evening to spend the night and then to Baltimore on Saturday morning to be there for the homecoming of my brother and friend, Bishop Melvin Easley. On the way, on the way, there were two incidents that could have been fatal. I, I, I'll go to the extreme. We're coming down the highway at a pretty good clip, and this other car comes onto the highway, not yielding. I had to pull off the highway and go around him and get back on the highway in order to avoid either me hitting him in the front or him hitting our car right where Sister Doretha sat. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I, I rejoice in that. I rejoice in that when I when I when I got when I got back on the wheel and, and I was a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was a little nervous, but I said, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. 
we got down a little further on the road and 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 I'm, I'm in the lane i'm in the middle lane and there's this 52 footer uh a tractor trailer and he just decides to come over to the middle lane no turn signal and i was not behind him if anything i wasn't in his blind spot but he just kept coming over and i thank god there was no one in the left lane and we were able to get into the left lane. And, and yes, I rejoice at that, but that's not enough. That's not enough. That's not enough. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us a reason this morning. You've given us a reason this morning. Revelations, Revelations 20 and 12. And I'm going to close with this. I, 20 and 12 says this, and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. And the sea gave up its dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That 20th verse says this, Luke 10 and 20 says this. It says, nevertheless, rejoice not. Yeah, yeah, you've got a few pennies in your pocket. Yes, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Your, your, your message now, you're able to preach across the world. You're giving manna to everyone. Wonderful. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. But the 20th verse says this. Nevertheless, don't, that, that's not enough. Rejoice over, but that's not enough. He says, rejoice over this. He says, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. It didn't have to, I didn't have to be here this morning. None of us that are on, that's watching right now had to be here. But oh, how many of us just thank God? How many of us? Oh, God, this morning, this morning, we say, thank you, Jesus, that my name, that I know my name, I know my name is written in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, that I know my name, I know my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you that I know it. Thank you that I know it. There's no doubt in my mind that I'm saved. There's no doubt in my mind. If death takes me today, my name, my name is written. And you and I have a reason to rejoice. And so I'm going to take the rest of this day, the remainder, and I'm going to chill. I'm going to chill in knowing yeah, you've been going up and down the highway and praying and doing that, all, all that wonderful stuff. Yeah, living in expectation. Oh, uh, but something beyond that. My name, your name is written in heaven. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for your amens. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you that that you yeah 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 that you could identify. Thank you, thank you. Now, now let's go share this. Let's go let's go share this testimony with somebody. You got one too. You got a testimony too. Yes, you do. You've got a testimony, and and the enemy doesn't want you to share it. He doesn't want you to share it. But no thing will be able to hurt you. 
And, and I just thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I, for those that want to give, it should be expo uh, should be go going across the bottom of your screen. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Oh, oh, look, there's something else that we're rejoicing over. Our neighbor donated a car to the ministry. <laughs> donated the car. And it needed a little work. But some of you helped us on that Giving Tuesday a couple of years ago, and we have enough money in the in the uh, car or the SUV account to be able to do the repairs on this vehicle. See, 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 but that's still not enough. That's still not enough. That's good. That's good. Yeah, because we're going to need it over there at the property for limbs and trees and carrying wood and cement and whatever else we're going to have to do. But more than that, our name is written in heaven. God bless you until next Sunday. Same time, if it be the Lord's will, we'll see you then. God bless you.